So let's have a look at the first order passive low pass filter. Now it's passive because there's no any gain involved in it. So we've seen this circuit before a couple of times. So we're going to look at this in the time domain and in the complex frequency domain. And we're going to relate the quantities that we work out from this derivation to the general equation that we uh, just derived in the, the previous video. So in a, a low pass filter, we have a resistor and then we have a capacitor and we take the output across that capacitor. And we can redraw that in terms of a complex frequency, uh, replace the T variable with the S variable and the capacitor is equivalent to one upon CS. So we've seen that before. Now the output here is going to be uh, Z2 upon uh, Z1 plus Z2. So we're just taking that fraction of the voltage or from the, the full voltage uh, Vn. And we've seen that derived in a, a previous video as well. So we can write this in terms of uh, Z2 and Z1 as 1 upon Cs and R plus 1 upon Cs. And we can write all of this here. The Cs is going to cancel and we got our uh, transfer function for our low pass filter is equal to 1 upon 1 plus RCS. So we can see here that we're going to have a pole whenever S equals minus 1 upon RC. Okay, so if I draw out the, the sigma j omega uh, axis, so the complex uh, frequency plane, then we're going to have a pole at minus 1 upon RC. And that's going to give us a, a low pass filter with the phase as shown here. Okay, so we've seen this before in the previous videos. Now, in the time domain, uh, we could take this function here and yeah, transpose it back to the time domain. And it would look like uh, this uh, function here of time, which is 1 upon RC e to the minus 1 upon RC times the time, okay? And the, the crossover point here is 1 upon RC. Now, why don't we um, uh, use these uh, simple low pass filters? Well, the, the issue is really that uh, if we were to use the, the main issue really is to, if we were to use this type of low pass filter, well, first of all, there's, there's no gain associated with it. Um, and uh, secondly, it's going to be load dependent. So if I was to go and stick a, a load on the output here, another load, then uh, this load and output is obviously it's going to um, affect the, uh, the actual transfer function of this little low pass filter. Okay, and we don't really want that. We don't want the load affecting the transfer function of, of your filter. And we can prevent that by uh, ensuring we use all pump circuits, which are going to have a, a high input impedance and a low output impedance. And we've seen that again in a, a previous video. So now, another thing we'll cover here um, is the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter. We've mentioned this before, so we'll just pop through uh, a bit again, a bit more detail. So the frequency at which the output power has dropped to half of the peak value, uh, or the power is equal to uh, V squared upon R. So if we say R equals one, we say power is uh, equal to V squared. So if we were to half the power, it's equivalent to having a uh, one upon root two of the voltage because it's related via the V squared term. So for a, a low pass filter, we have the transfer function that's given by this equation here. Or we can write it in terms of the uh, frequency. We're replacing S by the J omega. So this is the transfer function here. So if we were to look at the magnitude of that transfer function, so we look at the magnitude of, of this here. So it's equivalent to having our uh, taking the square, take, squaring all the terms and take the square root of the whole thing. So that's equivalent to root of one squared, uh, the root of that one squared and the j omega r c squared. So as I say, we've seen this before. We we going to have one upon root of one plus omega r c squared. But what is it we want? We're we want the 1 upon the root of 1 plus omega rc squared to equal 1 upon root 2. Okay, so that's going to be 
uh, the half power point. So that's going to be 1 upon 1 plus and omega is 2 pi f, so it's going to be 2 pi f r c, okay? Now the, the square and the square root just cancel out, okay? So that is going to equal a half. Now we have actually used this equation before in previous videos, but I don't think we'd gone through and, and fully um, derived it. So it means that we can rewrite that then as 1 plus 2 pi f r c is equal to 2. So 2 pi f r c is going to equal uh, uh, 1. So f the is going to equal 1 upon 2 pi r c. So f c is the, the, the cut-off frequency. So it, it's, it gives you uh, the edge of the passband, and it's, or it's called the minus 3 dB point, so when the, the power dropped by um, a half. So we have an example of this. Um, and it's built up in uh, logism and sorry and multisim so we're going to have a wee look at that in a minute but the simple example we've got a one kilo ohm resistor and a one microfarad capacitor and that's the input voltage that's the output voltage so this is our little low pass filter so we're saying that fc the cutoff frequency is one upon two pi rc so that's going to be one upon two pi times a thousand times one times ten to the minus six so it's approximately equal to um 159 hertz. So what we do is we'll go and we build this in uh, multi-sim and we'll put in a 1 volt peak signal. So it means then that the output voltage should be equal to um, 0 0.707 uh, peak voltage here. And we can see here we've got our magnitude plot against frequency and we've got a phase plot so we're only really interested in the at the moment in the, the the magnitude plot and we can see I've got a marking here and that marking there uh, tells us that that frequency is 159 hertz at the point where the power has dropped off by uh, a 3 dBs or it's the the, the voltage has dropped by um, uh, 1 upon at root 2, which would be 0 0.707. So you can see here we've got 0 point, we've got 704 okay, millivolts and we've got 159 hertz. So that shows that the design that we've done in multi-sim is actually correct and it does give us the 3 dB cutoff at 159 uh, hertz. Okay, so let's have a wee look at it in uh, our multi-sim and uh, you've got access to this little example as well. So you can just download it and have a little play with it. So this is our little circuit built-in multi-sim. So we've got an input voltage of 1 volt peak and it's, there's a resistor here, R1, and a capacitor, um, C1. So that's one kilo ohm, one microfarad. So that's just the little circuit we've, we've seen uh, previously that we've analysed already. Now we can ignore this for the moment. We're going to use that in a minute for we create the board plot. But in order to look at the frequency response of this, you can simply go up into the simulate, analyse simulation, and you can uh, click on AC sweep. And then you can change the sweep, the beginning and stop frequencies. Okay, so if I was to leave it as it is there, and I'll save that. Then we can run this, and it will come up with our window, which we've seen previously. Okay. So that's the window we've seen previously, and we can see that we can adjust the position here of this little uh, yellow bar, but I've adjusted it already, I've moved it across, and you can see it approximately uh, 707, 703 there, but it would be 707 if it was perfect, uh, perfectly positioned. So that would be uh, the, the value of root 2, or 1 up in root 2 of the signal. Uh, and that's the current, I say, about 159 
hertz, okay? So that is the 3 dB cutoff and it does actually work within the simulation tool. So another thing that we can look at is the, the board plot. So if I go into the analysis and I just go back into this simulation, interactive simulation, I save that and I have a look at the uh, the board plot. I click on this here and um, we'll get the, the magnitude and phase of the of the board plot here. So there it is there. So that's the board plot as we see and we see it dropping down at 20 dBs per decade and that's the magnitude and that's the phase we can see it uh, going from 0 degrees over to 90 degrees so it's a bit rough and ready but it shows you um, at the moment how to uh, find these values and create them and have a look at the board plot and also the um, just an AC analysis on a simple circuit okay so that's all there is for now I'll get you on the next video okay goodbye